SE this morning. Trish, thanks. And for this, we want to bring in CNBC's Rick Santelli from his perch above the Chicago Merck. And Steve Leisman, who's here in the studio with us, CNBC senior economics reporter. Good morning to both of you, gentlemen. And Rick, no surprise, I'd like to start with you. After yesterday, your videotape outburst was the most emailed moment in the uh, in the blogosphere, in the, in the web universe yesterday. Uh, first of all, what would you do about all the folks who've just been through this era where they were told there were bucket loads of money, they were told it was almost their patriotic duty to own a home whether or not they could afford it. Who do we see about them? What would you have them do? Well, I think that if 92% are paying their mortgage and the other 8% aren't, we really can't separate out, Brian, the 8%, how many were gaming the system, trying to flip houses way beyond their means, didn't put accurate information on their loan information versus some of the hard cases that we really ought to do something about. So, you know, you think these 92% that are paying aren't cutting back, having problems, uh, their 401ks or 201ks, but they're knuckling under. I think that the administration needs to broadly help everybody so they don't disenfranchise the confidence of the 92%. Send everybody a check. You know, it's not about interest rates. Lower the interest rates to zero if you're worried about the refis. I think what struck a chord is lowering the principal amount of their loans. Steve, what would you do compared to Rick's position? Well, first of all, Rick's, they're not lowering the principal amount of the loan. That's just wrong. The other thing is, is look, we know a lot of things were done were done wrongly back a couple of years ago. They put people in loans they shouldn't have been in. This was the, the free market Who's doing there, its thing. What's that, Rick? Who's they? Who's they? The, the, the bankers yeah. and the borrowers, everybody so made a mistake. So you're saying the bankers the trouble did something we're illegal. All pay for then it here, we my should friend. sue the bankers, right? Then we should sue the bankers. Well, the bankers... Okay? Those 92% aren't the ones to be indirectly the, sued. We're bailing out the bankers, Rick. We're bailing out everybody. The one people we haven't bailed out are those people who are about to lose their homes. Rick, 9 million people estimated to lose their homes. The question is, if we put them in a normal mortgage, could they survive? We all know this is not the, oh, the only fix here, Rick. But there just seems to be one case, put them in a mortgage they can afford and see if they can stay Rick, there. Let me jump in here for a second. We've heard so much over the last several years about Americans needing to sacrifice, and we haven't been asked to sacrifice enough. President Obama came to office saying, the time for sacrifice is now. No more rhetoric about it. We're going to actually have to do it. Isn't this a first example where those of us who can afford to pay our mortgages and our taxes are being asked to sacrifice? And yes, some other people who don't deserve our sacrifice are going to benefit, but this is the test, isn't it? Well, Matt, did they have to actually ever ask you to sacrifice They're or did they legislate? Right well, they're legislating your choice away, though. You know, Matt, there's a lot of terrible people in this country that want to help. The part of the, the, the story that has struck a negative chord, and this isn't about traitors or elite, I am bombarded everywhere I go. A lot of my uh, impassioned talk yesterday, hey, maybe I, I could have chosen some words better, but I think at the end of the day what this boils down to is you have to treat everybody fairly. Those 92% are knuckling under as well, and to be charitable, Trouble we, Rick, is that we, all, so. we, we all suffer, Rick. If, you, if your neighbor's house goes into foreclosure, hey, your home value suffered, goes Steve. down, Rick. Steve, is your 401k, Matt, your 401k, uh, 401ks have been decimated. I'd like some of that money back. You know, when you invest well, in it, it doesn't work out well. Unfair. I would like a take back. Rick, the other thing is that you should, you should also note the Federal Reserve is out there buying $500 billion of mortgages. They Let's have lowered mortgage rates for everybody though. by a percentage point. And you keep railing against these government uh, programs that say they don't work. They have been the only thing that's worked out. That we have tried for two years to let the bankers and the borrowers figure it out on their own. We've gotten almost nowhere. What's your nowhere. definition of what is working? Working is when there's, they... there's a lot of zeros and trillions of dollars. Aren't you worried about your kids and your grandkids? A absolutely. Aren't you worried that the notion to, to do something, no matter what it is, spend money, there's a downside there. You the come to a point, is... Rick, where doing nothing costs more than doing something. And, Rick, let's get and, back to that foreclosed home next to you. Yes. What do you do about that? That was the crux of this. It was the mortgage crisis that, ticked, that started this off and got us all into this. It was the leverage based on some of those subprime loans. Let's not lose sight of this world of derivatives and leverage that is now going in reverse. It doesn't Granted, change the foreclosed house next, to, next no. door to yours.
Listen, there, if there's, listen, when houses were at the high prices, did you get your house as an investment and think, oh my God, I don't think my house is worth that, but maybe I ought to sell. So there's a lot of Americans that feel bad, and if the house on the left or a house on the right goes into foreclosure, the experts are saying you suffer too. But if you let judges break contract law, this innovative country that everybody rich. knows is going to snap back, the market, we're going to send a bad the message to world investors. This, the market cannot fix this because of the complicated structure. What is the market, this Steve? Is not the Jimmy market is our it's people. A wonderful life. The market is some... the market is people. Now, you know, Steve, there is no such thing as the market. It, right? The now, market is a, a mechanism, Steve, and the mechanism is moving and representing decisions by it was people. Rick, Rick, let me just jump in here. Let me move beyond the theatrics of what you said yesterday and ask for the practicality of it. What is it exactly you want people to do? You've called for this Chicago Tea Party. What exactly do you want the average person out there in that 92% to do about this? to make sure that there's a lot of debate on this topic, exactly what we're doing now. And I think the 92%, all of our neighbors who are now making sacrifices, but since they're paying their bills, they're not looked at the same, they need to get some help too. You can't pick winners and losers. Maybe they ought to have a tax holiday. Maybe everybody ought to get a check. I think that we need to be more equitable in the money we're spending that we really don't have. Rick Santelli from the Chicago Merc, where I've learned they do not sell decaf uh, in the morning. Uh, Rick, thanks. Steve not. Leisman, thanks for being here with us. Gentlemen, thank you both. And this is the kind of debate that's going on all across Absolutely. the country on this. Let us bring in David Gregory, the moderator of Meet the Press. David, good morning to you. Good morning, Matt. So, so they lay out this plan this week and listen to what's happened. How worried is right. the Obama administration about just what we're hearing this morning? Well, they've got to be worried, and they are worried about it, because the debate is going to play out about whether any of this actually works, and is it fair. And part of the debate that you've just been hearing goes to the core point, which is that the administration wants to modify payments for mortgages. Well, 50 to 60 percent of the time, housing experts say, people read default. And that down the road, five years, and under this plan, those rates go back up. People could be in for a big economic shock. But understand what this is really about. Just like the stimulus plan, this is about arresting the fall, affecting the trajectory of this downturn so that there's a soft landing instead of the economy falling off a cliff. The administration wants to keep as many people in their homes as they can for not just economic reasons, but social reasons as well. And they do they want, want to present the foreclosure. And David, they do want to present this as sacrifice, don't they? I mean, Secretary Geithner and Secretary Donovan wrote an op-ed in several papers, and they said these are no ordinary times. It is a burden the American people should not have to bear, but that we must now shoulder together. Well, I think that's right. I think there is a kind of call for sacrifice here. You see that particularly uh, in the stimulus in terms of taking on all of this debt. But when it comes to the housing market, it is a slightly different question about the nature of the sacrifice, because what is it that the government is trying to restore? Do they want home values to return to where they were at the height of the bubble? No, that doesn't make they common just sense. They want to economic them. sense. They want to stabilize them. They want to keep people, enough people in their homes so that prices might actually come back. This is a stopgap measure. All right, David, who do you have on Sunday and meet the press? We're going to be talking.